Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I will talk about something which I can probably classify as a theory behind uh, transformers of electricity. So we know about transformers, they all exist around us, they increase the voltage, decrease the voltage. So right now I'm not talking about transformers, but the theory behind these transformers. Now, this lecture is called uh, Induced Variable EMF. EMF stands for Electromotive Force, as you know, which is basically a voltage. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. This is a free website. You can find Math for Teens course on that website, which is I consider to be a prerequisite for physics, um, because you really have to know your math. Something like derivative uh, is everywhere in, in physics, in, in integrals in many cases, vectors everywhere. Okay, so um, I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the unizor.com um, because you will see that this lecture is just part of the course, so you will have the whole curriculum of this course, what topics are, are, are covered, etc. And you can basically go logically from one lecture to another. They are in sequence. And uh, obviously, the subsequent um, material is based on the previous one. So, okay, let's go. Um, now, by now, we know what induction is. Induction is um, the generating, generating the electromotive power in some uh, conductor, wire, or something, uh, which doesn't have its own um, source of electricity like a battery. Um, nevertheless, the electric current can be generated, electric, uh, electromotive force and electric current can be generated um, by, by this process of induction. And induction is always related to a variable magnetic field. Now, um, let's just um, recall the most important formula for induction. This is the Faraday's law, basically, that um, if you have some kind of electromotive uh, force generated um, uh, by induction, then it's basically a rate of change of electromagnetic flux, phi. This is a Greek letter, phi. So phi is the electromagnetic or magnetic flux um, going through some kind of a uh, loop or whatever. So if you have, let's say, a loop, wire loop, and you have variable um, magnetic field which goes through this, then the magnetic flux, if it's variable, which means in this case its derivative is not equal to zero, if it's a constant, derivative is equal to zero, and there is no uh, voltage generated here, there is no EMF, there is no electric current in this loop. But if it's variable, then the electricity is basically generated, the electromotive force is generated, and um, uh, the electric current appears in this loop. Now, what is the magnetic flux? Well, magnetic flux is basically a, a result of, in a very simple case, result of multiplication of electromagnetic field um, intensity, magnetic field intensity, um, and the area of this contour. So if we are talking about constant values, let's say you have contour which stands still and you have a uniform magnetic field with intensity B perpendicular to this um, to the plane of this um, bio loop then you just multiply basically if there is some angle between them, so let's say if this is the loop and magnetic field is not perpendicular but at the angle, then you have to multiply it by corresponding like sine or cosine, depending on what, which angle you're talking about. So we're all, we, this is all covered in, in the previous lectures where I explained 
uh, everything about magnetic uh, field induction. So this is given. Okay, now now we will talk about a, a series of three different experiments which will lead us to this functionality of transformers, which I just started the lecture with. Okay, now, my experiment number one is, again, a pure demonstration of um, electromagnetic induction. So, let's consider that you have a permanent magnet. North, south. Now, let's also consider you have a wire loop. And you are inserting the um, the magnet inside the wire loop. Now let's think about what happens in this particular case. The um, magnetic field lines for permanent magnet are like this. Right? Now, inside obviously they continue because magnetic lines are always um, closed. Now, what happens if this permanent magnet stands still and my wire loop also in a stationary position? Well, nothing happens. As soon as we start moving, you see magnetic field lines are different. When this loop is very far, the only thing basically it does, uh, it, the magnetic field lines are almost parallel. Let's say it's a small one here. All right, It's parallel. So there is no change in the magnetic flux because the area stays the same and the magnetic um, field intensity is also the same. We are not crossing um, magnetic field lines. So if you are not crossing, it's exactly the same magnetic field lines we are crossing. Uh, we, we are actually going through this um, loop, whether it's in this position or where it's in this position. Now, let's consider it a little bit closer. So my loop is greater. So now this is a magnet. Now let's think about this way. You see, at this position, we are actually crossing these lines more and more intensely. Now, the next position, when it's a little bit closer, it's this one, right? See, now we are crossing all these lines here and here and here. So my point is that the closer we are uh, to the edge, let's say north edge, of, uh, of the magnet, the more intense, um, obviously the more intense the magnetic field is, but also we are crossing more magnetic field lines because we are getting closer and closer. And at this position we are actually Actually, all the magnetic field lines which are coming from this edge of the magnet going through um, uh, our loop. At this position, only these which are here are going through the loop. But at this position, all of them are going through this loop. So that's very important. Now, what, what, what's the consequence of this? Well, the B in this formula is basically increasing. The more magnetic lines, it means more intense magnetic field actually is. And since it's changing, B is changing, so B times S is changing, uh, where S is the area of the loop, 
uh, and if it's changing, then the derivative is not equal to zero, and we have electromotive force generated. So what happens further? Well, next position. Let's just wipe out this one. My next position is in the middle. Now, what happens in the middle? You see, in the middle, when we are moving in the middle here, it's basically exactly the same magnetic um, uh, field lines are going through this loop. It's basically parallel to these lines. So only these and these and only these lines are actually going through this. No more. All these guys are outside and they stay outside. If it's right near the edge, uh, uh, sorry, right, right near the middle, these lines are almost parallel, right? So only these lines, there is no change in intensity. It's exactly the same. If intent is intensity is the same, my flux is the same, and at this time my um, derivative is equal to zero, no EMF. So there is very small EMF in the far distance, then it's increasing, it reaches its maximum at this point, when basically all the lines which are coming from here have to go through the loop, right? But as soon as we move to the middle, only certain part of these lines go through the loop and no more and no less, which means B stays the same in this case. And uh, flux stays the same, basically. Um, now, what's next? Well, let's move forward. We move our magnet forward and our next position, let's say, is this, near this edge. And now, at this edge, again, all the lines are going through. So, again, the uh, flux is increasing from this position of the loop to this position of the loop. Flux is, again, increasing. And uh, if it's increasing, then, again, my derivative is not equal to zero. The only little problem is that, in this case, my um, magnetic field lines, which are going from north to south, are going from inside to the outside of the loop, right? If loop is here, it goes first it goes to the inside and then to outside. In this case, the direction is opposite from outside into inside. If direction is opposite, my um, generated uh, in, uh, EMF would have a different sign. Right? So, I mean, you consider this flux as increasing in absolute value, but changing the sign. So first it's positive here, here it's negative. Because B changes, the, the, the B is a vector actually, so B is changing the direction, and that's why um, phi is changing the sign. So absolute value is growing, again, to the maximum when it's at the edge, uh, but it's in different direction. So my EMF is small, then it's very large at this point, then it goes to zero, then it goes to a, let's say, negative uh, large, an absolute value large, but negative. And then as we move forward, as we move mag magnet forward, and our loop goes there, um, it's again decreasing for obvious reasons. So, the bottom line is, as I'm moving the magnet through the wire link. The magnetic field induction is working, it's demonstrated, and uh, basically it's changing according to this Faraday's law. Now, my next experiment is very much like this. However, I will change something. Now, instead of a permanent magnet, I will have some kind of a um, um, wire loop with um, electric current, direct, direct electric current from the battery going through it. Now, we spoke many times that the properties of 
the wire loop with the direct current in it are very much like that of the magnet. It's one of the lectures dedicated to what exactly the magnetism is, etc. So, it acts like a magnet, which means there are magnetic uh, lines which are going around it, and basically it's equivalent to a north-south um, permanent magnet. All right. So, what I will do? Let me just draw a little better picture. I'll do it this way. Okay, so it's about like this. Now, here is my same loop. Uh, wire loop as before, just a wire loop without any kind of source of electricity like this one. So all I did is I have replaced my permanent magnet with a wire loop with a direct current in it, which has exactly the same properties as a permanent magnet. And what happens if I will do exactly the same? I will move this um, wire loop with electric current through this, the bigger one, apparently. So what happens in this case? Exactly the same as before. If I am far, there is basically no noticeable electric current. But as I am moving closer and closer, the magnetic field lines are going through this ring. and I'm crossing these magnetic lines. My number of magnetic lines, if you wish, is which go through this uh, loop is increasing. By the time I'm completely uh, around my, this um, wire loop is around this one, all magnetic lines go through this. So I have the biggest um, EMF. And then again, as soon as I'm crossing this, it goes to a different direction. And basically it's exactly the same as with, um, with a permanent magnet. So at some point we are reaching maximum. Um, and uh, maximum on, the, on this side it would be positive obviously, on that side it would be negative. Uh, in the middle it will be um, it will be zero because I will move parallel to my lines. If I'm completely around this uh, loop is around this one, I'm moving parallel to magnetic field lines, so the flux is not increasing. But on certain on certain distance it becomes the biggest, and on this di distance it will become um, the, the biggest in absolute value, but negative. So, exactly the same thing. Now, what actually causes the change of the flux in the first and the second experiment? Movement, mechanical movement. So, as, as I'm moving, um, my geometry is, is, is changing, basically, and number of magnetic field lines which are going through this loop is changing just because we are changing their mutual position. What's most important is that flux is changing. Yes, the reason is mechanical movement, but the result is that the flux is changing and that's why EMF is, EMF is uh, generated. Okay, but why don't we do it differently? Why don't you keep these two uh, loop stationary and instead of changing the whole geometry, the, the mutual position, we will do it differently. We will change the uh, current inside this loop. Now, you remember there is a formula for the magnetic field intensity B, um, which is um, inside, in, in, in the center of a, of a circular loop, we, we did calculate it. 
it was mu zero, which is um, uh, permeability of the space times current divided by 2R, where R is the radius. Um, now, this formula was derived in one of the previous lectures, and that means that if I will change my current, if it's not a direct current like here, what if it's source of some kind of a variable current? doesn't matter how we achieve it. Maybe we have some kind of um, variable resistor rheostat uh, here. So we are changing resistance, and even if it's a um, battery which has constant um, voltage, by changing the resistance, I'm changing the current. So as soon as current is changing, it becomes function of time my intensity becomes a function of time. It's changing. If intensity is changing, my flux is changing. If it's changing, my derivative is, equal, is not equal to zero. And my electromotive force is generated, and there is some kind of a um, current running in this particular uh, loop. So, my last experiment is keep these two keep these two uh, wire loops uh, stationary, but instead somehow change the um, current in this loop. Instead of just constant direct current, change it in some way. Doesn't matter how, as long as it's changing my uh, magnetic um, uh, field. Uh, intensity is changing, my flux therefore is changing, and my EMF is generated. Basically this is the theoretical basis for transformers. We have basically, well, two loops. One is with some kind of a voltage, and another has a generated, inducted, uh, electricity in it. And now we can actually change the voltage using certain um, technique which I'm going to discuss right now. Now, what if instead of one loop you have a spiral? This spiral tightly uh, positioned loops basically one one near another but it's one uh, piece of wire actually so you have source of electricity and you have many loops here well each loop creates its own intensity magnetic field intensity vector right now since these loops are very close to each other we can consider basically that each one of them creates exactly the same magnetic field with exactly the same intensity and since intensity is something which is basically supposed to be added together it's a vector algebra but all the b's all the intensity vectors are identical so we just multiply it by the number of loops so if you have n loops here the intensity of the n loops is n times greater fine now, how about this one? What if, instead of one loop, I also have spiral? Now, my spiral has maybe some kind of consumer, like a, I don't know, a lamp or whatever. Now, each loop basically feels the change of the field, magnetic field, change of the flux. Flux is the same through each loop, which means in each loop there is a generated EMF. And all these generated EMFs are added together, and we have basically, if this is multiplication by n, this is multiplication by m, where m is number of loops. So, the result e resulting EMF 
depends on number of loops and number of loops here so by changing these two numbers we can play with how big electromotive power is generated on this side and how big uh, how strong electromagnetic field is generated on this side so this is how transformers are working they're playing with these two numbers and playing with these two numbers we can actually do whatever we need to do with the voltage and again details of this uh, uh, I will discuss when I'll talk about transformers right now it's just the theory behind we start with one uh, permanent magnet we replaced it with one loop with a direct current moving then instead of moving we are changing the current and then we are just adding certain number of loops in a spiral instead of one single loop and that basically leads us to uh, to a transformer okay now I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture because the notes are um, accompany every lecture on unizor.com starting from mass 14s now it's physics 14s all notes are there also the website has um, problems which I solve then there are exams for you to solve the site is completely free no financial strings attached you don't even have to sign in if you don't want to uh, basically that's all I wanted to talk about today so, good luck. Thank you very much.